Once you have your container on the tree, you may have to empty it out several times a day to keep it from overflowing. You can just pour it into a stock pot as shown here. And then just be sure to put it back on the tree so you can keep collecting your delicious sap. Make sure it's on there good. Don't want it to fall off. If you have multiple containers, you can also just switch one out for the other. It's easy and it goes quickly. Here's a pretty typical sap flow. It may look like the sap's coming out really slowly, just drop by drop, but you'd be surprised by how quickly it fills up. Keep sap somewhere cold, like a fridge or a porch. It should be at around 38 degrees. I kept mine in this three season porch here. You can also leave it outside, but just make sure it's secure and covered so bugs and squirrels and things don't get to it. It'll keep about a week in the fridge, or you can freeze it for longer storage. It's pretty common for ice to form in the containers. This is actually a good thing because the water freezes before the sugar does, so the resulting sap is sweeter. You can just pour off the sap that's liquid and discard the ice. If you have a wide enough container, you can just pour the ice out, otherwise you'll have to let it melt first before you can pour it off. So, uh, sap as it's in the tree is completely sterile. There's no bacteria in there that you need to worry about. Um, but when it comes out and sits in a container, you know, especially if it's out there for a long time, if it's getting warmer, um, there is a chance of bacterial contamination. So, um, if you're worried about that, I would drink a lot of raw sap in my day <laughs> and continue to. But for those of you who might have weaker immune systems or want to give this to children, or if you just want to be cautious and not get sick off of the sap you drink, which totally makes sense, um, you can just pasteurize the sap really quick. So it's really easy. All you do is bring it to a rolling boil and boil it for a minute. Um, so I have some sap here that I'm going to pasteurize. And um, so you can see right now the sap is totally clear. Um, when you boil it, it's going to get a little cloudy because some of the minerals are gonna precipitate out. It's um, something they call sugar sand. And uh, so it'll get a little cloudy, but that's okay, it's normal. And you can filter it through a coffee filter or a cloth filter to remove some of those particles. It won't ever get as clear as it is straight out the tree, but it still will taste good, so it's fine. So here's my big pot of boiling sap. Um, if I lift the lid up here, let's see, it's come to a full rolling boil. So I'm just gonna set timer for a minute. And then it'll be good. And uh, you might be wondering why I am using such a massive pot for a relatively small amount of sap. Um, basically it's because the surface area is larger so it makes the water boil faster so it makes everything go faster. <laughs> um, so if you have a wide pot I recommend using it. So I have these uh, cone style coffee filters that I use and they're a little bit fragile but found that they work well. So I just kind of go like that. <laughs> um, pour the sap through. Try not to spill a ton. 
and it's probably hard to see, but the color is a little cloudier than it was before. So this is a little time consuming. Um, it can take a while for all the sap to filter through, but if you don't want like mineral, uh, don't want like flaky minerals <laughs> in your sap, then this is the way to do it. Uh, ultimately, you could use like cotton. I was using muslin and found that it didn't filter as well as the coffee filters do. So there's that. But yeah, you just keep on doing this till it's done. So I just wanted to show you guys what the sap actually looks like in the pot. Um, so you can see from here that there is a bunch of sediment. That's the sugar sand as they call it. Um, and you can probably tell that the sap looks a little cloudier too. But like I said earlier, it's totally normal and that's why we're filtering it. So here we have our pasteurized maple sap. It's fresh out of the fridge, it's nice and cold. Um, and basically what you do with it is use it like water. Uh, you can just drink it as it is. Um, you could put lemon juice in it, you could use it in a smoothie. Um, you, know, you could use it in place of water in tea or coffee or in when you're cooking oatmeal or rice or other grains. Um, basically anything that you would use water in. If you don't mind a little bit of sweetness in there, you can use maple sap. Um, so this stuff is about, since we tapped a silver maple, those are usually around one and a half percent sugar content in the sap. So it's not super sweet. It'll just give it like a slight touch of sweetness. Um, and yeah, it's really tasty, especially in things you want sweet anyway, like uh, if you like sweet tea or sweet oatmeal. Um, but the way I like to drink it is just to pour it into a glass with ice cubes. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Um, so it basically just tastes like water with a little bit of sweetness and kind of like minerally uh, because, you know, this is the, um, you know, it comes out of the tree. It's the stuff that helps the tree grow in the spring. So it's got like trace minerals in there and different chemicals that help the tree grow. So it's actually kind of a healthy drink. You know, it's low in sugar, uh, got, like I said, trace minerals and it's tasty. So I invite you to try it.